Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, as uh, already mentioned, uh, I want to talk about uh, how adding a story uh, to your demo can help convey complicated concepts, and uh, also how this helped us in uh, a few specific uh, open source projects. A few words about me. Uh, so my domain is search, on-site search. Uh, I'm also organizer and co-founder of a conference on e-commerce search. Uh, and I think it could uh, use a bit more UX perspective, so please all come on 12th June this year. It's um, not been mentioned on the website yet, so we haven't announced it yet, but 12th June, right after Berlin Buzzwords, it will be. Um, and I'm maintainer uh, and founder of the Quirky Library and co-initiator co of the course project. So these are the projects that um, uh, I will be uh, mentioning today or discussing. And I'm Chief Strategy Officer at uh, Open Source Connections and at Open Source Connections. Uh, we help clients around the globe to get good search done. Uh, understanding the user, the user focus is one aspect of it. A great uh, other area is the actual implementation, so the machinery behind search and AI, and uh, also the processes um, uh, to implement a good search. So the domain, the problem domain, so to say, is um, the uh, search and solving specific aspects of on-site search. And um, if I, I want to give you a bit of an uh, introduction to this domain because I assume, okay, the open search folks are here, but uh, overall, not everyone works in search. So search is a lot more than just finding matching documents to a query. Uh, so to make it work well, it takes a lot more. And uh, there are some features that might come to our mind, like helping the user formulate the query, like auto-completion, spelling correction, if the user struggle formulating the query, uh, filtering down search results, etc., etc. And then there's another aspect to it, and that's about improving the search result quality, managing our search. Um, and this is, I think, very specific to search. It's a problem that has not been solved yet. Yeah, so we're struggling, we have to experiment a lot. And users uh, uh, and implementers of search will ask themselves, um, how do I know how good my search application is and how uh, can I improve the quality of my search? That's basically uh, an area where we struggle and that's, I would say, still a gap uh, in the large uh, open source search engines. And this is where specific solutions come in and that's the domain uh, uh, of the libraries that I'm going to talk about. So small libraries covering kind of niche aspects um, in, the, in the domain of search. So these libraries, usually open source, uh, come as plugins uh, or as um, tools that integrate closely with uh, search, uh, with the search engines. And um, I've listed a few here, like Cupid, so that's a rating system uh, and a relevance experimentation tool. Quirky, query rewriting library, a UI for maintaining rules for rewriting queries, and the Rated Ranking Evaluator, so uh, a tool to calculate search quality metrics. I hope to see some question marks in your faces. Yeah, so that's probably nothing you, you understand. Yeah, so who would understand this? Yeah, so how, how do you explain this? Um, and uh, that's basically our problem. So I created the Quirky library, uh, and now it's a, it's a big still not big project, but a bigger project 10 years ago. And the way we've tried to explain it, use these types of explanations. So how does the rewriting work and what are the rules or how would rules look like to, imp uh, to influence the, um, the search results. Um, but then users would still ask, what is this? Yeah, so what uh, would that help me with my work? Yeah, so the, the person who would have to take a decision might struggle with this type of explanation. So uh, the problem, the underlying problem here is the creators of the library, they are information retrieval specialists, but they are addressing a target audience, the decision makers, who are product owners and engineers. Some of them might have some knowledge in the domain of information retrieval, but not everyone has. Yeah? And that, that's the gap that we have to bridge. And uh, it's not easy. <laughs> so what comes to mind is, let's create a demo. Yeah? Demo how, how this software works. And luckily, the maintainers of these libraries uh, used to know each other. And uh, we created a demo um, 
application. It's called Chorus. Yeah, so the, all these libraries sing to the same song, so to say. And uh, it's a demo application that uh, exemplifies how you can put together these components um, and create an online shop. So we have a, a fake uh, online store, the, the Chorus Electronics Store, and uh, these application or these components uh, would then uh, work together. And there's a way to show how we can improve search result quality uh, using those, those components. Nevertheless, at this point, we are just showing how the components work together. We still need to, to tell a story. So the demo per se is just an, uh, a piece of software, so to say, that you can download and run. Um, but still, we have to tell a story. And this story has to address um, the, the target audience and win them over. Yeah, so that's the, the key element here. So we invented Pete, the search product owner, and we invented Pete, um, a kind of conference-driven development style. Yeah, so we had to give a talk at an event uh, when we uh, introduced Chorus at the joint Berlin Buzzwords Mises Haystack conference, pandemic time, online uh, 2020. So together with Paul Maria Bartosz, uh, Johannes Peter, and Eric Pugh, we spoke about a tool stack uh, for uh, e-commerce search. So what is the story of Pete? And I'm using some slides from the uh, presentation that we used at the time. So the manager of Pete basically was saying, make our search better, uh, build me the best-in-class search. So this kind of pressure people oftentimes uh, perceive. And people say, oh, OK, great challenge, thanks. <laughs> but then uh, we highlighted kind of the thought, uh, the, the way uh, Pete would think about it. Yeah? So, um, I receive complaints, uh, I'm in a competitive situation, uh, and then we got into this kind of evaluation, closed source, commercial solution versus open search. So these components might add, help him uh, solving problems that commercial search engines would already have solved partially. So, but then uh, the commercial search, search engines would give him uh, less um, uh, opportunities to become better than the composition, etc. So that would be the the um, the thought process of, of Pete. And uh, basically, uh, what we try to tell is that uh, there is some stuff that Pete needs to do first. Yeah? So the boring stuff to catch up with the other solutions. And uh, basically, then once he has solved this, he could go to the uh, hot stuff together with his team and uh, become better than the uh, competition. And basically, we, we said, OK, using this tool stack, you can uh, speed up the boring stuff. Yeah, so that was the, the story um, that uh, we told. Uh, so basically what we did, and I admit the, the Pete idea was a Eureka moment. <laughs> yeah, so it had not been planned, not systematically. We just thought, okay, we have to give a talk, and Pete came up. But it helped us uh, to put ourselves into the shoes of the user of the software. Uh, not the end user, but the decision maker um, who would um, then decide upon using this open source software or not. Uh, or not. And we did this, uh, or this helped us in this talk, but not only there. Also after this, um, this created a lot of momentum for our project, and Pete became kind of a, a figure uh, that would help us um, uh, drive our development. And I want to highlight some of the, the benefits around that. So one thing that Pete helped us is um, with is um, creating a documentation that is relevant. Yeah, so it provides guidance to the kind of Pete persona. And um, because we now address uh, the, um, the needs of Pete in this documentation, I think in the afternoon there's a talk about uh, guidance or creating documentation that is a guidance, uh, helping uh, with the adoption of software, and that's is, is, is along the same lines, I think. Uh, and I think the, the, the root cause here is uh, because it makes it relevant to Pete if you or this user group if you make it relevant. We still have a technical documentation, reference uh, documentation for these components, but I want to give some examples of this guidance. So what we did is, um, mainly what we, what we did is uh, evolve around the concept of cutters. I don't know how familiar we, uh, you are with cutters. So cutters is basically formulating explicitly a practice, how we do things. Yeah? So that's, that's, a, that's a technique. And some teams do this. And, and I think the key element here is 
uh, making that explicit. Yeah, so some teams have the, the cutters, kind of, they live them, but they are not aware of them, and telling or making this, writing this down, teaching each other uh, is, is the concept here. So a best practice, um, and then the best practices kind of get um, uh, uh, aligned with what Pete actually needs to do. So our cutters evolved around the given problem uh, in e-commerce search or search in general using and solving how to solve this using the, the chorus stack. And uh, they are quite educational if you uh, look them up on, on chorus, how you do things, quite illustrated. And I think they're empathetic. Yeah? So we, uh, the way they are written down is, okay, if you're in this position, you can solve the problem like this. The same in the blog post, so if you le read some of the headlines in the blog post, you will see um, that um, uh, we have examples like uh, Pete solves the e-commerce search accessory problem, yeah, so um, accessories showing up uh, in the results when I search for the main thing, that's a common thing in e-commerce search, so Pete will probably um, solve, uh, have to solve this problem. We went step, a step further and also created videos around that, so basically, um, Again, putting the cutters into a video, so these became like instructional demos, yeah, but recorded, pre-recorded, and uh, this works quite well. Yeah, so we see quite some some uh, traffic uh, behind these these videos. So I've spoken about documentation as a benefit of adding the story, but also the adoption. Yeah, so basically, uh, we saw that uh, this helped our users. The software helped our users. Um, and we've received a lot of positive feedback from product owners and, and tech leads. Uh, the, um, the number of downloads uh, has been growing uh, along the time. And uh, basically, we have some success stories. So at uh, MySys 2022, we had a panel discussion uh, with actual users of um, uh, the technology stack. So a product owner and a tech lead, lead uh, basically um, uh, explaining how they use these softwares uh, to speed up their development and also grow in terms of um, team maturity. So I think uh, we helped our users and the story, uh, telling a story contributed to this. Uh, also, I think the adding a story created clarity and momentum for us. So I've mentioned the, the talk at the time where we invented Pete. So that uh, basically helped us with the talk quite easily. So we could uh, then uh, uh, create this talk, the story around this, but also after it. Yeah, so now we have a much better means to convey the story. We always think about um, Pete when we uh, demo the software. Um, it ha also helped us discover a few features. I mean, we are very small projects and uh, it's not very systematically, but sometimes it does. And I would say it also helped us take clearer decisions about what not, what not to include uh, into Chorus. So I like uh, the, the kind of clarity that comes from having that, uh, such a kind of persona in mind. So basically, it, not, it didn't just help our users, but it also helped us. And finally, I didn't want to come with a summary slide, <laughs> but I uh, kind of uh, want to say that I hope I could inspire you uh, to also think about maybe you can add a story and it might help you, your users, and finally uh, their projects. Yeah? So, and that's my take on or my, my <laughs> what I wanted to share. Okay. Uh, thank you, Renee. We've got a little over five minutes for questions. Has anyone got any questions? I was really interested when you said it helped you not do something. Uh, I know it's probably hard to go into it with maybe too much detail, but that's a very powerful thing to do. Uh, how did you, what was the clarity moment? Was it like you realized that it was what you guys wanted and not what Pete wanted, or how did it enable you to say no? Yeah, I think it's ex exactly like this. So uh, when we created the course project, I mean, developers somehow uh, on this mindset, oh, maybe it's like something you can install as an application. Uh, so uh, something like you unpackage and then you have a web shop with all the search bells and results coming out of this. And that's basically not what it is because um, uh, PEED is in a different environment. Yeah? So PEED maybe even has to make an existing search better. It's not about creating a new search. And uh, basically that led to this clarity. And uh, also sometimes um, 
there's an idea, oh, can we add this or that aspect? Uh, and that's not related to search at all. It's about maybe some kind of technical monitoring uh, that has nothing to do with making search better. That, that's what the, the, the demo is about. So then we can say, well, you can submit a pull request, but <laughs> we don't want to maintain it. Yeah, so that's basically uh, where it helps us uh, with the decision making. I have to say, a lot of what I explained is with hindsight. Yeah, so we, we didn't say initially uh, we wanted to uh, create a persona and then um, do all that, and that helps with the decision making. But uh, with hindsight, I would still, still say it has helped us. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, do you anticipate adding additional cast of characters for other use cases that you have yes. down the road? Yes, uh, it has been, or there, there are, you, when you go to the katas, you will discover some, some more. Uh, though Pete is, uh, Pete is the strongest, and we realize that uh, a lot of decision making um, comes from product management and not from the tech side, so to say. Uh, but yes, the, the, the engineer person probably should, would be there, I think, yeah. Any more questions? No? Okay. Thank you, Renee. Thank you.